today. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome. It's Tuesday, August 13th. This is TOZ's private sandbox application review meeting. Um, first up we have is Loxy LB and we have Tag Networks Nick on the call to walk us through their recommendation. Over to you, Nick. Sorry about that. My, <laughs> my, literally my mouse went funny the second that I was trying to come off mute. So LoxyLB mm -hmm. is, is an interesting project. It's obviously a load balancer of which there are a number within the, the sort of the, well, just the sort of the tag network domain. I think the key thing around Loxy is that Loxy provides a very specific need uh, uh, for low latency networking that the telcos are using. And, and I think from a, a sort of an adoption perspective, the, the, the sort of the predominant adoption is again around the, that, that particular industry. So our, our kind of a recommendation is that whilst there's, you know, certain feature overlap with, with other projects inside the landscape, Loxy kind of does fit that very specific industry, you know, industry niche. Well, Telco is quite a big niche. It, it's not a, a small one. Um, therefore, we, we feel that that's, that's a sort of differentiator enough to, to kind of um, say that, you know, that there is a, a, a sort of an appreciable difference between other projects of the like. Um, I think Loxy is, is also very very well maintained and well governed the uh there's a definite drive and demand to make things very open and to to kind of expand on on what they're doing with with maintainers and and community and and obviously cncf sandbox state was helps quite a bit with that okay um are there any toc members that had any outstanding questions or um concerns with the project that would prevent it from moving to a uh, vote any observations or insights that you wish to share all right hearing none bob let's go ahead and put LoxyLB to a vote not finding the hand raising thing um, oh, fast, sorry, go for I, it. I have, I have no objections. Um, but Nick, just from our conversations before, this would be a great one to, it'd be good to see them build more community. And if you had maybe a telco specific networking session, um, a few projects that might be interesting, but I just wanted to throw that. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd really like that. I, I think the, the industry specific stuff is is probably very helpful um, for, you know, the, the, as the landscape grows, being able to kind of segment by specifics for industry. So definitely something that we would, uh, we'll pick up and I'm pretty sure the, the, the Loxy folks would be more than happy to, to also kind of start those maybe even as a working group inside of Tag Network. All right. Um, thanks for the suggestion, Karina. That's great. Um, Nick, if you could follow up with the project regarding Karina's comment for uh, better community diversity and um, beyond just the existing core maintainers, that would be great. All right, next up is Qsion Stack. This project is a technology stack for building cloud-native um, internal development platforms. Let's see here. Um, Tag Contributor Strategy posted a quick update on it. Um, Karina, I see that you asked some questions. I can ask some questions as well. Um, does, let's see here. Is app delivery on the call to talk about this project and, and their recommendation? It's okay if the answer is no. Okay. Um, are there any Comments, questions, concerns, observations about the Qsion Stack project from TOC members. Karina, thank you. All right, I found the hand raising thing. Um, <laughs> so Qsion Stack, it's um, interesting looking through it. Um, and I know you made some comments on, you know, whether Qsion, because they have several sub projects and some of them could be broken out and they have 
one, the Carpour, which is a um, visualization tool. That one looks like it could be used by more people in the community just other than just this stack. Um, I think it would be beneficial to see a review of Cusion versus Cusion stack and Carpour because I'm getting the feeling that this one, and they mentioned it in the comments too, that this one really could be um, pulled apart in two different projects that would be beneficial to the rest of the ecosystem. Yeah. Other TSC members, Duffy? I'm confused by their website in which they say Cusion Stack is in the Cloud Native Computing Foundation landscape. And I'm like, this is a sandbox review. So like if you go to fusionstack.io in clear language below, it says that they're a part of it. And I'm like, what's happening here? Um, only because I saw that too. You can not be part of Cloud Native Computing Foundation and have your project listed in the landscape. It doesn't mean you're uh, admitted to the foundation. Yeah, agreed. I've seen projects not accepted, but still listed in the landscape. I just don't understand how that works. Okay, thanks. Yeah, it's a little confusing. Um, Bob, could you take that back to CNCF staff to get better clarity? Because I, I imagine that there are some project adopters that read that and think projects are part of the CNCF and they're really just in the landscape. I know we've had this in the past come up. So, uh, better clarity specifically on what? Um, projects identifying themselves as being within the CNCF landscape versus actually being in the CNCF. And Chris, I see you're on the call. Yeah, no, it's, I think... The trademark rules kind of allow them to do that, even though you could okay. argue it could use folks, right? That, you know, they're portraying themselves as the project when when they're not. I think it's okay to say that they're in the landscape because we allow yeah. products, things there. It's just, if it's done in a deceptive way. Yeah. This thing we'd have to, I think we'd have to for formulate something. This has come up enough times that maybe we could try something here. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, regarding Karina's comment and proposal and some of the discussion for Cusion Stack on separating Carport out from the Cusion Stack project's uh, application submission, how does the rest of the TOC feel about that? Uh, yeah, I had one question or thought. Uh, like, it's an umbrella project um, as uh, as submitted. So, uh, you know, can they add more sub-projects uh, like they already have and like is that one way of getting more things into cncf not directly through sandbox but through you know having sub projects of uh, sandbox projects um what do we think about that well from a operations perspective if we have them break them apart and they're run by the same group of individuals there's they Doesn't have a, happen. yeah, it has additional overhead from us. It and for adopters, it provides better separation around what the scope of it is that's under discussion. Um, sometimes we do have projects that have a ton of sub projects that don't actually ship with the core, um, right. and that can cause confusion for adopters of if they are concerned about how the TOC is conducting evaluations, did we actually look at all the sub projects with the same level of scrutiny we do with the core? The answer is no, because we focus on the core of the project. Sub projects are subject to the core project governance and that's what we test and, and check against. So I can, I can see the argument for separation for usability of carport, but moving it out doesn't preclude that. I, yeah, uh, I guess I was tangentially referring to like, should we get them to write like what space do they want to be in, uh, right? Like they do mention platform IDP uh, kind of thing, uh, right? And so that kind of like gives them a smaller sandbox rather than, hey, I, we can add any project. Uh, that was the kind of thing that I was thinking about, like having them self-declare what, it, where they think um, the project is gonna go into rather than, um, you know, any platform IDB stuff. Uh, okay. 
uh, Ricardo and then Karina? Yeah, I, I was just trying to find a parallel. And like, if we think of Backstage, it probably it's a single project and it provides all this functionality as well. Like you can have application templates, you can have a nice visualization and search of the resources in the clusters. And uh, and we still see it as one project. We we don't split it into like the application templates, the search functionality, the visualization. We we take it as one. So I, I think here it's kind of similar. Karina. In backstage, though, it's not necessarily and you'll know more ricardo it's not necessarily a bunch of different sub projects they consider it one big project and then you can create plugins and stuff so yeah uh, but, but but in the core you do have these three parts it is a bit different because they split it into sub projects in the code i agree with you but functionally i think it's sort of similar like application te templates visualization and resource um, um yeah. Um, the only thing that I really was trying to flag um, is with projects um, having the sub projects, will they in the future just throw in more sub projects if they don't if they don't have a clear definition of what they are looking for? Um, and then you can just add anything and say, well, now it's part of the CNCF. Um, right. So I'm hearing clear scoping is a concern associated with the project. Um, tag contributor strategy, you came off mute. Yeah, I was going to say, um, so I was going to give uh, two examples of, of umbrella projects that we accepted um, that have sort of different technical architectures. Um, for conveyor was originally accepted as an umbrella project. Um, and you know, from what I can tell is more similar to this in that not all components shared shared a common technical framework. Like all the components, they had a strong mission. All the components were interoperable, but they weren't necessarily technically dependent on each other. Um, the um, As things develop with Conveyor, they actually ended up with two of their sub projects being much more popular than than uh, the others and have revamped the project to center around those two sub projects. Um, the, um, the other one, uh, open cluster management um, is one that has a strong technical core where all the components are dependent on the technical core to operate. Um, the um, and and for that reason, you know, even though their mission is very general, which is cluster management, um, it's pretty clear what fits within uh, OCM. Okay, so let's do this. Um, let's uh, push put this back to the project to provide us better clarification around their scoping and their intent. Um, I think it's certainly expected and reasonable for sandbox projects to kind of refine their scope a little bit more. But I think at this point, we want better clarity in the direction that they're heading um, and kind of understanding a little bit more of their intent there. If there is a TOC member that could provide that as a comment to the project on there, um, once we have a response um, and it's satisfactory to the TOC, we will move the project to a vote. Uh, does that work for everyone? See head nods. All right. Do I have a TOC member to volunteer to provide the comment to the project? Thank you, Duffy. All right. Um, next up, Shipwright. Bob, can you clicky click? Sweet. Thank you. All right, Shipwright is an extensible framework for building container images on Kubernetes. Um, let's see here, we've got app delivery, provided some project summary information, key considerations. The project is tied to Tecton, which is a CDF project with a lot of maintainers from IBM. Um, 
They would like to see Shipwright collaborate more with CNCF projects and have a more diverse set of maintainers. They are currently um, recommending it for inclusion. Uh, any additional commentary, questions, concerns, observations associated with the Shipwright project? I think if we really need to include it in the CNCF, or wait until there, we see more collaboration come in. Uh, personally, I think if it is already a CD Foundation project, and it is tied to a CD Foundation project, why does the project want to move to the CNCF? Yeah. Has has Tecton applied yet? Yes, Tecton has applied. So Tecton's Marina? also coming over to the CNCF. Okay. So I I have some more context. Um I feel like I'm talking a lot this mess this meeting. Um when I was still in Tag App Delivery, I did meet with the, the Shipwright project presented and uh, we made the recommendation that they talk to the first talk to the Tecton project to see if it made sense to be a sub project. They did that and both of projects agreed that it didn't make sense. Um, they're, they want to move from the CDF, the CD foundation to the CNCF. Um, Tecton has applied, um, but they're not up yet. They and as Bob says, they don't want to accept any new projects, but because they're still, um, yeah, they want to wait. But the other, yeah, I mean, that's the main one is that they did do their due diligence and went and um, followed the recommendations of the tag. The other concern was that it's only um, IBM and Red Hat. So. Mm -hmm. Dems? Dems, if you're talking, you're muted. Uh, if it's a existing project in another foundation, uh, has there been public um, discussion about like moving? Uh, has there been consensus, or is it? Uh, how, you know, how did they reach the decision, and like you know, where did they reach the decision? Like, um, do we know? Karina? I am thinking about where that is captured. We, there were people that are, are companies that were pulling out of the CD Foundation, and they, from what I understood, felt CNCF was a more stable foundation, and that would provide them better access to cloud, other cloud-native projects. Um, I will look and see, unless somebody else here knows where that is captured. It's not okay. a concern as such, but it, it's good to know, you know, if they are making decisions uh, in a public fashion or not, um, you know, helps. Mm -hmm. Lynn, and then contributor strategy. Yeah, I just have a quick question. I'm looking at the GitHub repo. Um, I think they mentioned some instructions specifically for OpenShift. Um, Karina, you probably know this. I, I'd imagine it's supported more than OpenShift, but wasn't clear because the instruction mentioned for OpenShift, you need to do this and that. Uh, it wasn't clear to me if it's supporting like a more Kubernetes distro than OpenShift. They, they were um, also asked as a recommendation to remove all product and non-open source specific uh, messaging, they do run on other, uh, they run on Kubernetes. Okay, that would be great. Yeah, um, it might, I, I think it's okay to have specific OpenShift instructions if it needs to be. Uh, it, it just it would be great so that people knows it runs on all the Kubernetes compliant uh, provider environment. Thank you. Josh? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> um, I wanted to add some extra information to something Karuna was saying. So something a year ago, a little over a year ago, um, the Continuous Delivery Foundation failed to make their budget um, and as a result downsized. Um, as far as I know, the CDF has no staff assigned to it at this point. 
um, and offers no services to its projects. Um, and so that's why we're seeing Tecton and um, um, Shipwright come over. Um, we might see an application from Spinacre in the future for the same reason, um, I, because it's, it's no longer a foundation that can actually really help its projects. Okay, thank you. Kathy? Um, I see there's another project um, called um, Chemical. It's also about, it's also a container image and building tool. Do you know any, like, you know, difference between this project and the, and the Chemical? It looks like Kaneko um, is a mechanism that can build the container images. It, looking like looking through their application, we depend on the following projects. Co, Shipwright can use Co to delegate the mechanism of building a container image. Same thing for build packs, build packs, Kaneko, and Tecton. Um, so it looks like, yeah. So it sounds like it has compatibility with other projects. I think the question that that we should be asking ourselves is given the current state of matters within the cdf foundation cncf is not a home for everything underneath of the sun we have a cloud native definition so i would i would tend to push back a little bit here and ask whether or not shipwright canico and several of these other projects that exist under cdf meet the definition the newly updated definition of what is considered to be cloud native we do include practices associated with building and shipping container images as part of that. Um, so so I guess my question for you all is, do we feel this project and the related projects such as Canico meet the definition of cloud native for us to make a determination of it before we even have a, a conversation around this and Tecton coming in together or anything along those lines? Okay, Canico is not CDF. Thank you, Karina. Do we feel this meets the definition? I think it does. Okay, got one yes. Okay. Yeah. Are we comfortable with the information that we know about the project currently to be able to move it to a vote for inclusion? Or do we have any outstanding questions such as public documentation of the decision to apply to CNCF? Uh, it's not a blocker, uh, but it's good information. Okay, see some head nods. Yeah, I think the tech recommendation in the in the issue is also to to take it for a vote. Okay, all right. Um, let's move this one to a vote. If there is a TOC member that could ask in a comment on the issue about uh, reference to a public decision for application to CNCF. I have someone to take that on just so that we have it documented associated with the application itself. Duffy, thank you. Duffy is no longer allowed to take more actions for projects. Sorry, right. just, to, just to make sure I got, it is moving to a vote. It is moving to a vote. Duffy is going to provide a comment asking for um, evidence of that dis that decision to apply to CNCF, just so that we're aware that it was done in the public. It is not a blocker for a vote to occur. All right, next up is Cozy Stack. There has been quite a bit of chatter about this project. Um, Cozy Stack is an open source platform as a service platform and framework for building clouds. Okay, let's see here. We've got lots of comments here. App delivery and tag network did, I think you both provided recommendations. I'm, I'm looking for them on the issue. While we are looking, is there any comments, observations, concerns associated with the project? Um, we have a recommendation that it shows great promise. 
Um, it solves a lot of issues elegantly for simplicity and ease of use. Um, they have a lot of procedures and governance work ahead of them. In general, it seems to be recommended. Uh, Josh, I don't know if your hand is still up from before or if it's new. Oh, sorry, that's from before. Okay, Karina. So looking at this project, um, it looks like they are integrating a bunch of open source projects together into one stack, um, which means I haven't seen, and I wish Robert were here, I'm not seeing what would be new. Um, except for integrating the open source projects, right? And I don't see, I didn't see what, so Bob, unless you're seeing something, what is their own stuff on top for Cozy Stack? And that's why I wish Robert were here too. Yeah, so I, I haven't, um... I haven't looked. It was just Kubeflow is another one that I could think of that basically just repackages a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. And in the application, they said that similar projects are, um, they named downstream um, products as what they're similar to, like Rancher and Tanzu. Alex? I was going to make a similar comment to Karina. One of the things that's um, really evident is that you know they're they're implementing a control plane with Command G and having a bunch of tie-ins with storage and network providers. But the question is, how much does the project stand on its own, and how much is dependent on? um lots of other projects which which might actually be very small or very big but of, of sort of mixed heritages um because a handful of these product of the projects that they're including are pretty small as well so um like it, it the success of this one cncf project would be dependent on the success of a dozen other projects uh, they all have to work and be and work together. So it, it makes it kind of hard to see the long term roadmap for this. I agree. Dems. Yeah. Uh, following up uh, to what was just said, it's about um, how many more are we going to have? Like if we are going to bring Cozy Stack in, uh, will we? be allowing more such things that package other things? Uh, that would be the question also. So the, this is an interesting discussion because we've started to see more projects um, apply that are made up of smaller sub projects or that provide plumbing and instrumentation between several cloud native projects to unlock a particular solution or use case for adopters. Right. And, and I'm, I'm curious, given that we're starting to see an uptick in these kind of applications, is that the next wave of where cloud native is headed? Do we need to adjust for that? Or are we going to continue to be the home for those independent projects? Because And then at what point do we need to strike a balance between the two? Right. I, I don't mind, honestly, having these projects because it gives users a choice and like own opinion on like, here is a set of things that I, I know works together because there is a team working on it. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that that's what I was thinking just now. Yeah, and, and what's the probability that we can see this being successful beyond Sandbox all the way through to incubation? Um, Karina? 
The reason I really flagged this one is from our discussions in the DTR working group around um, sustainability of projects. And so I think it was Dems, um, sorry if I'm misremembering, that mentioned. Um, so you have the smaller and bigger projects. Okay, so if there is an Uber project that is integrating all of them, and now where do pro where do end users go for support if one of the smaller projects no longer has maintainers and they're using the entire stack? Is that now the stack's responsibility to provide security patches, you know, things like that. Um, it seems like um, a can of worms. So we have sustainability concerns. We have operational govern governance and maintenance concerns associated with the project. Some potential, um, to GP's point, around license exceptions. Um, Typically, I believe most other projects that follow a similar pattern use plugins and operators, but those mechanisms are are usually managed by the core, um, and the and and any projects that they depend on are replaceable with one another. So if you're looking for a service mesh in the ecosystem, there are several to choose from. You can plug and play as you see appropriate. This is a very different model, um, and that it's kind of encapsulating those. CNCF projects to work together with this primary one. Is this something that we want to move to a vote for Sandbox or would we be more interested in having them come back and apply at incubation with a higher level of maturity and demonstrated growth and interest within the market space by adopters? Josh, I think your hand is still up or newly up. It's newly up. Um, and uh, one thing I didn't see to follow up on this project with, so um, Anix is an early stage startup. Um, they have been very involved in the community, but they are an early stage startup, which means their business is going to change in the future as they move to being a late stage startup and, and not a startup. Um, and unlike etcd operator, um, this project is pretty much directly related to their core business. Um, and and um, I was just looking at their um, product project separation thing there, which is not very detailed. Um, so um, I was thinking about this in comparison is as per per you know comment a lot of, um, the folks here in the TOC work for companies that also own Kubernetes distributions, which is what Cozy Stack essentially is. Um, and thinking if one of us was contributing that to the CNCF, one of the things the CNCF would want would be a very strong project product, you know, separation along Agreed. with a lot higher level of governance than we normally expect from a sandbox project to ensure that that separation exists. I agree. Okay, so how about this? I'm going to propose that, that we do not move the project to a vote. Um, I would personally like to see better demonstration um, from the ecosystem and from industry in a demand and a need for a project such as this. And I would like them, if that were to occur, for them to reapply at a later date at the incubation level in a manner that also demonstrates better clarification and separation between the business as well as the project so that it can stand on its own. Do I have agreement from the TOC to move forward with that proposal or any modifications to it? I see a head nod from Duffy. Uh, yeah, plus uh, governance, right? Like multi-vendor governance uh, would be okay. useful uh, yardstick as well for incubation. I guess that's a normal yardstick we use for incubation anyway. Yeah. Um, Lynn, Karina, Ricardo, others? Agreement? Okay. I need a TUC member to volunteer to provide that as a comment to the project. It will not be moving to a vote. We are inviting them to reapply at a later date when they have demonstrated sufficient separation between the business and the open source project. 
and a market need and interest by adopters for such a project within the foundation. Do I have a volunteer? Yeah, since I'm not going on vacation, I stay myself volunteer. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. All right, Keniko, we just talked about this project. Demonless, easy and secure Docker file, Docker file container builds on Kubernetes. Right. Um, looks like we did have some discussion. Activity seems to be dropping off. Commentary and feedback, nine contributors so far, halfway through the year. And let's see, looking through the tag runtime and app deliveries commentary. There's no group alignment, run as an image. Any observations, concerns, questions associated with this project it has a six year history. Ricardo. So given the adoption of this project, which is quite large, um, should they consider applying for incubation or should they go through sandbox? I think we've we've had this comment a couple of times in the past for projects that are even less mature than this one. Mm -hmm. So the the one issue that like right now they don't have much in the way of staff or like governance and things like that to do it well. It's part of the reason why they actually tried to join Tecton first because there's a, a significant overlap in all the maintainers. And um, same thing with like the skill set. Um, they would fit in very well as a subproject under Tecton because Tecton heavily uses Canico. It's just that Tecton didn't want to take on anything while they were applying to the CNCF. So I could see this like if it's accepted, it could potentially move under Tecton eventually. Well, I would rather not create more work for everyone involved if that's the reasonable heading between the two of them. But I would. I'm, I'm not sure about that though. Like okay. a lot of people use Canico completely unrelated to Tecton as part of their CI pipelines because of the reasons that are stated here, which is uh, rootless, uh, no Docker, no daemon, uh, has quite a large adoption, very much outside the Tecton community. They 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 do. It's just that, um, again, when, when we, they look at the overlap of maintainers and how it's like integrated in the projects and things like that, like uh, Canico would still be like a standalone tool. It would just basically be a subproject under Tecton because Tecton heavily relies on it and it it shares essentially all the same people. Okay. Here's what I'm going to re recommend, because we don't know what the future between Tecton and Canico is actually going to look like. Um, I don't know that it's prudent for us to try to figure that out here and now. Um, the project has been around for a long period of time and surprisingly so doesn't have clear governance. Um, so I would be inclined to have them reapply at incubation level with more robust governance better maintainer diversity. Any other considerations or issues with that proposal? Yeah, the only issue there is uh, given the number of CNCF uh, end users who use that project, right? Uh, should we support them? That, that would be the question. Well, they're currently unsupported and they're already using the project. Right. Yeah, so it's a risk that uh, the CNCF end users are taking right now. Um, Correct. Yeah. So but maybe maybe like, it is something that has to be that should be surfaced up to them better. Right. Ricardo. No, I was I was gonna just ask Emily. Then your suggestion is to hold and apply for incubation, or should we just take it as a sandbox, figure out all the IP trademark things that might exist, and then do incubation? Um, I mean, should we vote for Sandbox now, figure out all the details, already give the recommendations you mentioned, which is governance and all these things? That is certainly a possibility. It doesn't hold them up from the maintainer diversity requirement that we would apply at the incubation level. 
Um, Duffy, I know you had your hand up. Yeah, Mike, I was, I was, I wanted to dig a little bit more into the idea of like whether we're supporting people by by taking a project in, but I don't think it's this is the time for it. So we'll just discuss it some other time. Okay. So we have two proposals. We can in, we can move to a decision for Sandbox with the articulation that they improve their governance and start pursuing better maintainer diversity. The project has been around for a while. The other option is to have them do all of that outside of the foundation and reapply it to the incubation level at a later date. Do we have a preference? I'm in favor of incubation, mainly because it does provide a longer time scale for whatever is going to happen between Tecton and, um, and this to work itself out. I also don't understand their, I don't understand why they would be motivated to look for more people to contribute if they do achieve the tecton thing. I was just going to echo what Duffy said. Okay. Any dissent? Dims? Okay. Um, so we are not moving this project to a vote. We are going to request that they reapply at the incubation level when they have sufficient governance and maintainer diversity. Do I have a TOC member to volunteer to provide that as a comment on the issue for the Canico project? Karina? I can do it. Just volunteering. Oh, I can do it. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so Karina, you'll take this one and maybe Kathy, you'll have the next one because I suspect there's going to be more. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you, Karina. All right, next up is Kexa. Yeah, we've got 15 minutes left and we got more to go through. Um, Kexa is an open source cross cloud platform compliance and customizable security tooling set. Um, let's see here. Tag contributor strategy reviewed it. I don't see a recommendation from tag security on the project. Karina, is your hand up new for this? No. Okay. Um, do we have any comments, considerations, or concerns associated with this project? Any observations regarding its alignment with CNCF inclusion? I'm I'm gonna echo the comment I saw in the issue from Dims, which is the separation between the company and the project. And I also digged into the website after, and I think this needs clarification. Okay. Also, um, Tag Security has asked the project to come speak at a meeting, but they it looks like they have not done that yet. Okay. So let's have them. Well, we could do a few things. We could have them reapply with better clarification or separation, or we can just have them do that in the form of a comment. Um, I don't see Tag Security's recommendation on this project potentially blocking it, or I don't foresee them potentially not recommending it for con inclusion since it is a um, compliance-related project, and we don't have very many of those within the ecosystem today. Lynn? Uh, yeah, I'm going to add my two cents about GitHub repo. Uh, Emily and team, I remember having this discussion. This repo only have two forks and 65 stars. So I'm uh, very concerned about who is actually using it. Okay. Very fair. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's do this. We will not move the project to a vote. We will defer them probably about... Uh, six months maybe to a year to get more adoption more interest um, more activity um, as well as give them time to engage in a dtr potentially with tag security um, and to improve their overall um, governance and heading separation between the open source project and the actual product itself does that work okay um kathy are you okay Providing that as a comment on the project? Yes, yes, I can do that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kathy. All right. Next up is SpinCube. 
SpinCube is an open source platform for efficiently running containerized spin-based WebAssembly applications on Kubernetes. Are there any concerns, considerations, and observations about the project? I know that there are plenty of concerns within the comment thread around the core element not being included in the application. And to me, that is a non-starter. Dims? I agree. Um, that's definitely a big, big red flag here. And uh, I think there were some of us who ended up communicating off the issue as well. And uh, there were some positive responses, but I haven't seen any public uh, follow-up after that. Mm -hmm. So I think we should we should not vote on this right now. Any dissent? Is this the one that the how to install is in open source, but the actual code to be installed is in cloud source? Yeah, the spin core is. Uh, uh, they have. Uh, they did have like a open source pledge of. I think I, I don't know exactly what they called it, uh, but uh, I think um, the yeah the operator and uh, whatever Kubernetes stuff um, that is required for it to run within uh, Kubernetes uh, is is a part of Spin Cube, which is the the outer shell, so to say. Um, All right, so let's do this. Yeah, thanks, Ricardo. <laughs> I, I'm I'm not inclined to adhere to blog posts um, for future direction, although it can be a good indicator of good faith. Um, however, for this project, given that it is missing the core component to make it functional within our ecosystem, I would say that we are not moving to a vote on this. Alex, I see your hand is up. Yeah, just a, just a small thing. We we have precedent for operators becoming CNCF projects like Rook. Uh, yes, which kind of you you know so so the the thing that they're installing really must be open source. I get that, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a CNCF project for it to be useful. Um, you know, like there are database operators and things like that. There are also and other storage operators which are which are in the mix, which aren't necessarily. Uh, installing or operating CNCF projects, but they're still useful from a cloud native point of view. I don't yeah. disagree. And we do have an open issue on the repo that I'm supposed to be providing better clarification on what constitutes an op a reasonable size of an operator for a CNCF project. Um, I think the other question that I would ask here is, it is specific to spin. Why not any other WebAssembly applications? We have two such WebAssembly runtimes, I believe. Duffy, is that correct? Wasm Edge and Wasm Cloud within the ecosystem. Why is this not compatible with them? Yeah, uh, the other one also is uh, by voting now, uh, you know, we are essentially we'll end up with two projects and then we're going to reconcile that. So I would rather give them time to uh, either close this uh, and open that one or uh, or come back here and say no, um, you know, no to the other one and say this is the only one that we're going to do. Give them some time to do that work um, okay. as well. All right. So we are not moving to a vote on this. Um, the recommendation back to the project is either reapply and include spin or provide support for other WebAssembly runtimes. Does that work? Do I have a TOC volunteer to provide that comment on the issue? I can do it. Thank you, Ricardo. All right, we've got six minutes left and we have way more projects that we are not going to get to. Um, so Heimdall. Heimdall is a cloud native authentication and authorization proxy. Um, I know that this one had a review done recently. Tag Network, is that correct? And Tag well, Contributor I'm Strategy. For that button again. <laughs> Go ahead, yes. Nick. This, um, this just came across our radar relatively recently. Uh, Dimitri presented to the, the group on Thursday last week 
uh, the, the video of which I only managed to just get up yesterday. And there is a, um, a document template which kind of details what's going on with that, which I apologize again. Uh, it, it kind of didn't make the, the two weeks ahead of time. That, that just got in today. So to kind of a TLDR, uh, Heimdall's are quite an interesting project. Heimdall seems to sort of fill the gap where the the kind of um, the the sort of the API gateway and, and other specifications kind of are, are missing some some functionality and features. So they have a the intention is that you have a proxy that sits in front of your service or services, and uh, you can then obviously write policy to to allow or deny authentication authorization to those endpoints. So it. it it means that you can remove the need to have hard-coded application code, uh, sorry, hard-coded uh, logic inside of your application, which, which is kind of um, using whatever your, your authentication method may be. Now, what they don't do is they don't do the authentication part themselves. They, they kind of leave that out to whatever authentication provider it is. They're concentrating on taking that authentication token and evaluating it and and against policy. Uh, the policy engine, I really like the fact that they are using like OPA. They, they integrate with a number of different policy engines, but the fact that there's, you know, that something that folk are very familiar with. Uh, and I think OPA policy is also very expressive in a way that can be, you know, very difficult to kind of maintain from something which is inside of uh, like, you know, you see a lot of rules based in YAML and stuff. So they're very simplistic rules. Um, so yeah, so I think that, I think that doing some great, great work, it's a, a single maintainer, but, um, it is a, is a sort of very good project and, and, uh, definitely Dimitri knows what, what he's, he's talking about and going on there. I think that there is a kind of a space and I was chatting with Dimitri that I am potentially to talk with the sort of API gateway spec folk to see around if some of the concepts from Heimdall can be integrated. And there's also the concept of working with uh, Quadrant, which uh, I was just literally five seconds talking to Karina about, with with the aim that they kind of uh, can, can can collaborate around piece inside Quadrant or Therino. Um, trying to think, is there anything else that I can give you info-wise? Governance-wise, this seems pretty good. Like the code seems to be pretty good. They're um, very active around opening and closing issues, maintaining PRs. Uh, it's actively developed. Um, I think my primary concern would be that it's it's a single maintainer currently, and the project doesn't have substantial attention. Um, Looks like there's only a, f a few stars and a and slightly more than a handful of forks. There's yeah, it's, I think it's around fifteen or so forks, and I think it's about hundred and thirty odd. I, I can't remember the exact number. I'll to dig it out with the document. One hundred and seven stars and thirteen forks. Yeah, um, and and, and I think that's, that's part of the sort of the, the rationale on why Dimitri wants to to kind of basically get some assistance with the project in in being able to kind of open it up to a bigger audience to try and attract more more traction and um because he is uh, ultimately the the sort of single maintainer and it's not a desired position for him yeah that's understandable uh Lynn I think you came off mute or had your hand up yeah I was going to mention I was concerned about the single maintainer and also the fork and everything um, I guess what's not clear to me, uh, Nick, maybe you have a little bit of insight, is like, I don't know if this is like a pet project of this maintainer, because I it's not clear to me what his employer does. It felt like a pet project. So I don't know, you know, what if the, the person stops interested or invests in this project? Yeah, the single maintainer, I think it's the main concern for me. Yeah, I... I don't know a hundred percent. The the kind of the history around the project was that it was developed to uh to just kind of solve a problem, which was to to kind of replace a monolithic um authorization and authentication system when they were moving to microservices. Uh I did ask for a, a list of users. 
uh, and and I wasn't able to get any sort of specific names. That, um, they have one. If you go to the adopters, yeah. they have one adopter which are recently added. <laughs> so yeah. I think I think one of the problems with with a project like any sort of security projects, folks are not always open about. That is very true. And we see that a lot with the adopter interview process for existing security projects. I think what I'm gonna what I'm gonna recommend here is that we hold off on moving this project to a vote. I would like to see um, them get more attention from the ecosystem, get more interest that way, and then reapply at a later date when they have a little bit more activity, maybe potentially a secondary maintainer on the project. Definitely, um, yep, having exposure to OpenSSF isn't a bad idea either. Um, having them present at tag, tag security, I think those would all be great things. Um, in the interest of time, I'll go ahead and take the action to comment on the issue um, and provide that feedback to the project. Do I have so any dissent, Bob? Oh, no, no dissent, but since we're short for time, um, should we schedule another meeting to get through the rest? Or like I can also create threads for each remaining project in the queue, like in tag chairs or something. Um, let's take that discussion offline. I would rather not. I think it is important that we have the sandbox meetings recorded and then posted okay. to YouTube after after the fact for these kinds of discussions that we just won't get out of the Slack threads. Um, okay. So we will work for maybe an intermediary time to try to get through the remainder of these. It might be that the next private TOC meeting to knock through the last five. Cool. Okay. All right. Are we in agreement that Heimdall is going to be um, deferred until they have better maturity and maintainer diversity? For the remainder, TOC members that are left, any dissent? All right. Okay, I'll go ahead and take that action. Um, we will work on finding a time frame to go through the other five before the next sandbox meeting. Apologies all that we could not get through them today. Um, we appreciate your time, and I will let everyone go to the rest of their day. Thank you. I don't know.